Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at Bandai's high grade Levitine version IV or version four, however you wanna go about doing that. This is the 160 scale kit from Full Metal Panic. Uh, we've previously taken a look at the 148 scale version from Aoshima. That was one that was a little bit larger and different. That one I think uh, had a little bit different accessories and parts kind of with it, but this one is essentially gonna come with like a lot of the same stuff. And unfortunately at the moment my Aoshima kit is completely disassembled because I'm in the process of getting ready to start painting that so I can't I won't be able to compare it to this kit side by side uh, but I'll try to do my best in the review to maybe just show you guys a, a picture of what they look like next to each other or something like that. But anyway this is essentially going to be about the same size as a typical kind of high grade Gumpla kit. If you've seen my review I previously reviewed the Arbalest as well as the Gernsback from Bandai's uh, HG Full Metal Panic line and they're pretty awesome kits and I expect the same here for the Levitine. So first off, really cool box art here on the front. If we just take a closer look up here, you can see just all the little details and like the little bits of light coming out from between the joints and things like that. It's just really cool box art here. And as always, as we get into it, I just gotta say a huge thank you to SA Gundam Store for making this review possible, for sponsoring this review, guys. Check the link to their site down below and use that coupon code ZAKUREALEASE10 over on their site to save 10% and uh, check out everything that they have there on their store. So. Let's take a look around the box here on the side. Just not gonna be anything special there. You'll notice that this kit came out before Bandai started removing the list price from their kits. So we do have the list price here above the barcode of 3,600 yen. So for just like a kind of HG size box here, you might think 3,600 yen is a kind of a lot and it kind of is, but again, all of the kits in this line have been a little bit more pricier. I think that's uh, probably due mostly just due to the licensing that Bandai's having to pay for the property. But anyway, here we have the uh, Lambda driver canceller here in the shoulders. I believe that's what these are, these bits here on the shoulders. Uh, the gimmick here in the hips, the other kits in the line had the same gimmick there. Of course, we have the giant, I believe that was the demolition gun, I believe that's called there. It has the special weapon. So this is something that the Aoshima kit did not have, this little weapon here that goes on the top of the shoulder. Uh, it's got the, that effect part there for out the back of the head. Uh, other weapons, it's got the knives in the knees. The Aoshima kit also did have that. Over here on the other side, just a little thing here for Full Metal Panic, what the kit looks like, just front and back, simple there, and then with the effect part and with the uh, Lambda Driver cancelers on the shoulders and the demolition gun there. So it does come with a pretty good amount of stuff in here. Uh, I think no other gun other than that, though. I think this one doesn't come with the shotgun, whereas the Aoshima kit did come with... I think uh, one or two other guns along with, I know it came with a shotgun. Uh, so here we have the sticker sheet for that, which doesn't look uh, too bad. It looks about the same as with the other kits, really, to be honest. So uh, there's our clear parts, so yellow parts. Uh, so it looks like the color separation is going to be better uh, for Bandai's version. No surprise there, that's kind of Bandai's specialty. Let's get a look here at the manual. So again, just a nice cover art there for that. On the back, here's some interesting stuff here. And it's really small font, but you can read that there. Over here, you can see, again, just the weapons. It comes with just the knife there, and then the demolition gun, and then the demolition gun in its howitzer mode, and then the smoke discharges. There is some more text here in Japanese and English, so again, feel free to pause the video there if you want to have a read through that. Down here, just more about the Soldier of Fortune. I guess that, I think that's related to the pilot, so maybe the pilot is a mysterious person. I'm not sure, uh, again, basically I'm just focused on uh, just the mecha being just a cool robot personally. I don't really know or honestly really care too much to know about the actual backstory. You guys have uh, often recommended me to actually watch this series, watch the anime at some point, and I probably should if I can find the time, but in the meantime we're just going to focus on the actual model kit itself. And here is the parts list for that. Uh, looks like we're going to be using everything except for a handful of polycaps on there and then it's just kind of normal construction let's go around here to the color pages there is building the weapons and all of that and then how to install the lambda driver cancelers on the shoulder so it's just like with the Aoshima kit it has the option of whether you want to have that on or off on the shoulder there you can use those you can also store the demolition gun there up on top of the shoulder and just a little bit about the articulation gimmicks for this it has the little sub arm in there, which it looks like this one does have, which is cool. Uh, this little kind of effect part for this little thing here. And then you can use the shotgun from the different kit there. That would be from the Arbalest kit. You can borrow that and use it with this kit if you want. So, oh, and okay. And this uh, wire part is also from the Gernsback kit. So in order to use that, uh, you would have to have the Gernsback kit there. 
as well. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's get a look at the runners. All right, so here's that foil sticker sheet, obviously a sticker there for the eyes, and the rest of it is just little bits of color apps that are going to be on there. Uh, these look like they're probably for the hands, those white ones there. The other ones, I'm not quite sure, but uh, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's pretty much the same as the other uh, HG Full Metal Panic kits. PC002 for our polycaps here in a dark gray. And here we got runner A1 in a really nice kind of slightly orangish red color. And this is marked HG160 scale Levitin. And then we've got a runner A2 as well, which is just a copy of this part of the runner here, minus those few parts at the bottom. Then we've got runner B here, all in white. And just, again, really nice details on these parts. They're really nice looking. For runner C, we've got the rest of our white parts, and this is going to be parts for the arms and legs. We've got two of the C runner. Runner D1 is in this dark brown color. This is going to be for like some mechanical parts, uh, just detail parts around on the legs and the feet and everywhere else kind of. We have runner D2, which is a copy of the runner here, except for these few parts there at the bottom. Runner E is in this really nice kind of yellow-orange color, and what's nice about this too is that uh, the Aoshima kit did not have any parts in this color at all, so they were all stickers for that kit, but at least for this kit we have uh, some nice color separation here. Whereas we will have a couple of orange stickers as we saw on the sticker sheet, but a lot of the little orange details on this will actually be represented in parts, which is nice. Runner F is in a dark metallic gray here for the hands and some of the like, frame and joint parts. Then Runner G is some more of that dark metallic gray for the rest of our joint parts for probably just arms and legs and things like that. And we've got two of the G runner. Runner H also in that dark metallic gray color, and this is obviously parts all for the demolition gun, but this is still just marked... Uh, on the runner just as Levitine, so it's not marked Demolition Gun or anything like that specifically, just for the Levitine in general. And finally, runner I in this very light, clear yellow color here for the effect part for this. Now, the thing about this is that with the Aoshima kit, this isn't just plain clear, so if you didn't want it yellow, if you wanted it in some other color, you could paint that. Unfortunately, Bandai gave it to us here in yellow, which fortunately or unfortunately, I mean, I'm sure it'll look nice, but if you want it in a different color, that's going to be a little bit harder to do that. So there we go, there's Bandai's HG Levitin kit, and I don't know why, but for some reason on all these kits they always use these small size runners, they never have larger size runners for the Full Metal Panic kits, but whatever the reason, anyway, it looks like it's going to be an awesome kit. It should be interesting to see how it's going to compare uh, plus and minus compared to the Aoshima kit. I think generally it's just going to be better probably in almost every way. The Aoshima kit is nice because it's larger, but I think this will probably have better articulation, better color separation, probably better details, uh, better articulation. It's just going to be a little bit smaller for the most part and minus the shotgun and minus the articulated arms underneath the chest there. So a little bit pros and cons, but generally I think this one is probably going to be the better kit overall. We'll find out in the review coming up next. If you guys have specific questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store. Use that coupon code ZAKURILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.